Okay, hi everyone. Uh, can you please let me know if you can hear me all right and if the music is okay and we can start this. Konnichiwa. Okay. Jazz hands. Um, okay, so today this will be a bit different than usual because uh, I just got this um, huge package of watercolor related art supplies from Kuretake. And um, I would like to just open them and uh, show them to you also. Uh, these are things that I have not used at all yet. It, uh, there are some new products and also products that were sold by Kuretake for a long time. And they asked me if I would be um, willing to try to use them uh, in this month's watercolor month. I will not be doing all the watercolor month uh, illustrations, but I want to do like three or four maybe uh, using their product. So they sent me some stuff and we will go through all these. I haven't opened them yet, so uh, we will open them together and uh, we'll try them here. I have like a, a Watson uh, sketchbook here, so it's well okay-ish watercolor paper so we can try them and see uh, what they are about and um, the first I have um, three products which um, are like based on old historic art series and these are like new products I guess and there's uh, Vincent van Gogh, Claude Monet and uh, Gustav Klimt, which I am sure I butchered the name's uh, pronunciation, but whatever. And um, yeah, so these ones are like markers that you can also like, uh, it's water based, so you can also thin them out with the water brush. And uh, these ones are the Gansai Tambi watercolors, so the Japanese style watercolors. So we will get through these. Um, Hello, hello everyone, hello Isaac, hello um, all you awesome people joining me today. Thank you. Um, yeah, so let's let's get to this one first because I, I think I feel most comfortable with this one. So this has six colors and like a brush pen thing. Okay. Let's see. So, uh, there's the brush pen. I have been actually using these for some time, so um, I know a lot about these. Um, you can open them here and just pump in some water. I have my water tank, so let me just pump in some water inside of this. So, it just fills in like this. You put it back together. And now you can use it like outside for sketching and something. So we'll use, try to use it here on these watercolors and see how it works. Uh, and we have six colors, red, green, blue, yellow. What is this? I don't know. Let's try it later. And like a gold color, which is good. Uh, and we have like pre-printed Gustav Klimt art two postcard size, I think pieces of paper and three also that are not printed so I can probably use one to do the swatches which is good and like a plastic palette it's actually quite solid it's this kind of thing uh, and some like a postcard thing and an explanation okay so let's open them these are nice because they have the names on the back and the numbers which are 
written in Japanese, so that's a bit uh, hard to read. I can read it because they have also the phonetic reading, so it's okay. But it's kind of hard to read. Mizu and ki and kuro. This one is upside down. Yo, yomogi, whatever that means. And kobai, kobai, I think. Kobai. Kobai is red. Akai ume? Akai ume ka. I think they got the Gustav Klimt like this one picture. The set of colors is kind of actually appropriate, I, I guess. Okay. So maybe this time let's try to use the paper they provided, like this one, and let's get to it. I'll zoom a bit. And... Yes, Kuretake is the name of the brand and it's a bit hard to understand because they also have the Zig mark on them. Like if you look at, at the markers, it's like the Zig uh, mark, but it's like Kure Takes Zig brand kind of thing. Uh, so sometimes you will see the Zig thing, and but it's yeah, it, the name of the brand is Kure Take. And I have your chat here so um, I can um, answer your questions. Okay, so let's go from like um, yellow, red, blue, and then we'll go the bonus colors. I'll use the the thing that they provided, but I have my water tank here because it's a bit easier. E okay, so from the first I see that this is a bit different than my usual watercolors because it gives me a bit of a resistance when I try to move my brush over it. So it's like kind of gummy. And oh, this is intensive. And I try to water it down a bit. So it's a nice yellow. And let's do the red. These brushes are nice, but the only thing that I don't like about them is that these fibers are really easy to get discolored. So they um, discolor uh, they get blue or green or something like that from the paint and you cannot clean them up Okay, so here's the red It's kind of bluish red And it's more transparent than the yellow is It's more like a ma ma magenta kind of color, okay and the blue Blue is kind of yellowish, kind of blue, I think. These seem quite intensive. Maybe not so intensive as uh, the usual watercolors that I use, so the Schminke ones, for example, but yeah, intensive enough. This is black. Okay. Kind of neutral looking. And we have green. Just kind of yellowish green. That's nice actually. Also kind of neutral and muted, which is easy to use, I guess. And we have the gold one, which is, it looks kind of gorgeous <laughs> in the pan. Um, oh, it's actually nice. I ha I don't use like gold and, and silver stuff so much, but um, yeah. It's kind of a new nice addition, I think, to this. Okay, so this is how the swatches look like um, of these colors. On the screen, they look actually quite similar to what I see in real life. So. Maybe the, 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 the green is a bit yellower on in reality than on the screen, but I think these colors, even only these six colors would be interesting as I said to, for example, get and sketch somewhere outside. 
Thank you. I'm happy that you liked the uh, June calendar. That's the one that I was um, most kind of um, on the edge about because I didn't like it so much. Um, I don't think any of these colors are granulating so much. I'll try this on, on, on this paper so uh, we will know. Um, especially the black uh, and um, the yellow looks kind of flat. Maybe the blue a bit, but not so much. Okay, um, let's try to do some mixes of these on my here paper. Uh, we will do first the maybe blue. Yeah, this is this is really a bit different than my usual watercolors because it, it kind of grabs the brush when I try to paint with it. Okay. Have the blue and let's try to mix it with the red red is the most transparent here okay so we get actually a nice violet i think quite intensive i like it okay uh let's mix the blue and the yellow so we have the blue and the yellow the yellow is probably the most intensive here. I'm, I'm really surprised how almost like, um, how do you call it? Um, like these, not translucent, but um, yellows that you put on like security stuff. <laughs> it's really vibrant. Okay, let's try to mix. I like this green actually. The green is not so interesting for mixing. Um, let's try to mix it with the red, just for fun. Um, I don't speak Spanish. I speak um, Japanese and I speak English and I speak Polish also. I should be, I should be able to speak uh, German because I, I. I was going to do it with the with, with red. I I learned German in my high school, but nah, I cannot do it. This gives a kind of pink earth tone, which is actually quite okay. Let's mix the yellow. I already have it here, so let's try to mix it with the red. It will give a kind of muted orange i'm guessing oh no it's actually quite nice yeah i think most of the colors are transparent um the black seems a bit flat now that it uh, dried you can see that it's a bit flattish like a gouache but the rest they are mostly transparent so yeah, I can still mix the green and the blue, so let's do it and we'll move on. Yeah, like warning yellow or, or Keiko, Keiko yellow. No, no, there. Uh, blue, right? Blue. Yeah, they're quite balanced and kind of home easy to use i'm i'm guessing it would be a bit difficult to to get a like a neutral tone with these because they are quite saturated so um, it's good that they uh no included included the the, the black okay Okay. Yeah. So that's this set. I actually like it. I don't know if I'll be using these this palette. Yeah, it's a kind of artificial and really intense colors uh, in this set. But um, then again, uh, because it's um, they want to they want it to be used um, like this, I guess. Like getting these kind of colors would would 
require a lot of work maybe if you mix it with the gold but uh i don't know um it's a nice set um it's quite balanced and fun i think and especially like having the gold would be um uh kind of interesting okay so that's this one uh let's put it aside and let's go for the next one let me just put this stuff away Okay, so we have the next set, which is um, this one. Historic art, Vincent van Gogh. And this one also has six colors and a water brush and some stuff in it. So let's just open it and see what's inside. Yeah, there's primary colors, primary colors, but there also is green and, and gold and black. So it's primary colors plus alpha. And this one is not, not, not primary colors at all. Uh, so that's is it everything. Yeah. Okay. So uh, in this set, we have six markers like these. That's actually the first time I'm, I'm seeing this. And uh, again, a pen like this. So we will not put water in this because it's identical to this one. And we have again some pre-painted line art sheets, which is nice. And some blank ones, which is also nice. And yeah, let's try them out. Uh, let me zoom in. Okay, my battery <laughs> my battery in my camera is low. Wait a second. Yes. Yes, the brush I'm using, um, the standard brush I'm using is a Skoda Perla. Okay. Focus. Okay, so we have six colors one, two, three, green, another blue, and black. No, like a brown. Okay, so these are like um, two tip ones. So on one side, we have like Am I doing it right? Yeah, I think so. We have like this thin tip, which is a just usual marker tip. And on the second one, we have this brush tip, which I think could be used for calligraphy if someone really is good at this and can control it. Um, let's see if I can paint a square without having like these marker marks. I guess people who uh, use Copics a lot would be better at this than I am, but... Um... Yeah, I think with a caref with careful application, you can get away without any like marker marks. And yeah, that's it. But also... Um... From what I can see from the picture that they um, like painted with these, supposedly, you can add water to them and do stuff with it. So let's try and see what happens. Okay. So first I'll just try to add some of this and use some water on it. And yes, we can kind of water this down into a nice gradient nice <laughs> that's it. interesting actually i'll put some water here and then try to use this marker and see what happens oh yeah 
this is also an interesting effect so like wet on wet it's a bit hard to control where the paint goes but it's an interesting effect and now I can use it while it's a bit watered down so but once it's a bit dry it's you cannot move it anymore so much I mean, uh, yeah you can a bit but it's not so nice and smooth the transition so you have to be kind of fast I guess these are not pigment based but dye based uh, markers so I'm guessing that they are not really good for making art that will be later displayed somewhere but I can see that actually they work really nice I they work they work really better than I expected I'm actually surprised how how nice this looks and how how nicely the ink works here yeah I can try just I'll take the blue and let's see what happens okay so we have some blue let's try to mix it a bit yeah so I can actually mix it using water these two colors are not really nice for mixing because they are both like kind of they'll produce this dull kind of green but yeah I, I think you could mix it and and make like a transition and just add some paint and mix it more and so on so actually maybe it's it's like having a watercolor brush always filled with a color which is an interesting experience for me actually and it works surprisingly well with this brush it's like having um, a set of Copic markers with a blender that actually work really nice here on, on this paper. Let's see if I can dilute the edge when it, after it's dried. Uh, not so much. The, the, it's, it's still here. So maybe on a paper that's better for lifting it would work better but wait mm. if I use like brute force to do it no it's still there, there is this edge here so when it dries I think it's it, it would be hard to make it um, like nice and, and without the line but yeah it looks really interesting actually uh, yeah let's um, let's take another one of these papers and let's try to swatch all the colors and see what we have in this set so um, here we have six colors so we have this golden brown which I like very much actually I'll try to dilute them we have just a regular yellow which is actually thinner than I expected I mean the color is okay uh, we have a green color this is really intensive whoa Okay, so it's like a dark bluish green. Um, uh, it's called. Do, do, do they have names? I don't know. They have like a number, right? Uh, 55, so number 55 green. And. Well. Like a indigo like blue which is also really dark and intensive okay and also really dark 
kind of dull brown color. Uh, color like this in the Schminke palette is called neutral tint. And we have, I guess, one more, which wasn't, okay. So we have like a lighter blue one. This is kind of yellowish blue. This one is really nice. Okay. So the only thing that I'm kind of, that's kind of weird about this is like, even after this part here is mostly dried, we have these uh, places where the like fibers of the paper can be seen. This is not the texture of the of the of the paint. It's the fibers of the of the paper getting kind of soaked with with the pigment. I'm guessing not the pigment with the dye. Let's try to dry this with a dryer and see if it's uh, if it disappears or not. Uh, Okay, so um, it seems that it disappeared a bit, but it's still visible. I'm guessing that depending on the paper, um, you would get these kind of effects and they would not get away, uh, uh, go away when it's even when it's dry. Let's try to paint something on the paper I have here. This is my Watson paper and let's see what it what happens. Um, yeah, let's go with some mixes like the yellow and the light blue, I guess, is a nice mix for it. Actually, like, looks nice. And let's try to put some water here and see what happens. Whoa. Yeah, so here on this paper also you have this effect of these blacker spots. I don't really like it so much. And there I go uh, making this nib dirty. Yeah, it's okay. And let's try to mix one more maybe. Uh, let's mix this orangish earth tone, like gold brown, with uh, with maybe the green. Uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, this is kind of nice and interesting. So, sorry. Okay, let's dry these two mixes and let's see what happens with the texture. Okay, so 
I have to actually say that even though this is dye based ink, not pigment, it behaves on the paper kind of similarly to what you would expect with maybe watercolors. The texture is a bit different because the pigment goes into different places and patterns than the uh, the dye goes into a bit different patterns than the pigment does and um, yeah it's okay let's try to put some water on it and see what how it behaves yeah okay so it actually thins down pretty well but leaves these black spots in the fibers of the paper which was kind of expected so maybe actually it lifts a bit better than just like the pigment based stuff let's try it also here uh, this one also lifts quite easily but this one when it leave when it leaf, lifts it doesn't leave these black spots uh, but this does yeah here we have a nice texture, I just killed the paper a bit, but um, it's a bit cleaner than the, the, the markers. Okay, uh, I, uh, I used Copics a bit, I have an opinion of I don't like them so much because they um, tend to leave the, these marks that you can really quickly tell that these are this is an illustration made with Copics and even though I tried to use them on different papers so they more like um, spread and it's easier to make uh, washes that are even it was hard for me to do control them in a way that I wanted to so um, it's a nice medium, but I don't like it so much. Okay, let's go to the next set. I'll just move this one from my desk. <sighs> okay, so we have a next one, which is this uh, historic art Claude Monet set. Let's get into it and let's see what happens. Konnichiwa. こんにちは。なんか日本のメーカーのいろんないただいたものを試して今後今月は水彩モンツらしいなので水彩的なものを二三枚ぐらいこの文房具で画材で描いてみようかなと思ってるんですね。あの今度ですかね。とりあえず。なんか使ったことがないマーカーとかなんかそういうものもいただいたなので、えっといろいろ試してちょっとどんなもんかなと感じです。Okay, so in this set also we have like this pamphlet, a uh, two pre-made uh, lined postcard size things, and three clear ones, and we have six colors which are yellow like an orangish tone um, blue one green red brown and again this pen which is the same one i'll use just this one that we used so far and yeah let's try them out these ones are just one tip and it has a lot softer tip than the other ones let me choose a color that's easier to see maybe this one and let's try them out. How we met is a secret. <laughs> because we might use it someday in a comic or something. Okay. So um, let's try this one. This is water based. It's called real brush. It's not, it does not say if it's pigment or uh dye based mm. it does not say or i cannot find it i'll just have a look at it later okay so oh this is really really uh more soft tip 
I can do this kind of lines a lot easier. It feels like a really soft watercolor brush, like a Kolinsky brush, maybe size two, maybe something like this. And you can get the tip really thin, but also go really flat. And from I can, from what I can see here, I can paint without making like these um, marker-like lines. Yeah. Okay, this looks really actually en encouraging and let's try to dilute it. There, let's try to lift it. it. The ink itself behaves a lot like the black ones. So it's, I think it's certainly dye based because of how the color changes uh, when I dilute it. It kind of goes bluish in, in, in um, in terms of this one, for example, so there is a bit of a color change when it diluted. So here the green is more yellowish, but when I um, dilute it, it turns like bluish, which is, I think, a dye based thing. So I can dilute it pretty much all the way like this. And let me clean my brush. It does lift a bit. Yeah, the, the other ones were felt tip, tipped, like these kind of sponge like. But uh, these, one, these ones are brush like, uh, similar to the brushes that are in these, I, I guess. Maybe a bit finer. Okay. Let's try to mix two of them maybe together. Let's get the blue and the yellow maybe. I think you have to be more uh, careful with these ones if you when you're closing them not to like strike the fibers because you can damage them easily. Okay, so we have this kind of blue and we have this kind of yellow which is really transparent and let's try to mix them oh this is difficult no i don't think it's possible this is really i don't know if you can see it uh this is this these, these are just pieces of paper that were in the sets i don't know what grams are there are they Mm, it doesn't say, but um, the paper that I have here, it's uh, Watson and it's uh, 190 grams. It's not the best watercolor paper, but I just use it like a sketchbook and to test things. So yes, this yellow is really not intensive. <laughs> okay, um, let's try to mix it, the blue maybe with a different color. So we have the blue. And we have the red. Let's try to mix them together a bit. Mm, yeah, they produce like this dullish violet. They actually quite mix quite okay. I'm doing it like this because with these pens, uh, I'm guessing you cannot use like a um, palette. They even don't ha don't give you the one that was with the watercolors because you cannot squeeze them or squeeze any ink out from them to mix them on a palette. So the only thing you can do is like mix them like that or maybe touch the brush to the tip and try to paint with this like like this or. I don't know, touch two tips together and try to mix them. Mm, or like maybe paint with one like this and then paint on top of it with, with the red, for example. That also works, but produces a bit different color than mixing it like this. You can mix it. Mm, 
so it, it's a it's di difficult more difficult to control them with uh, than watercolors this this is for sure um, even though they are probably easier to use than watercolors like in um, outside when you are sketching or something um, yeah they are di more difficult to control than watercolor colors to make like nice controlled transitions and stuff um, especially that you have to like get in with the water and like the break the wash to to mix them together and so on so mm, but I, I have seen some people on the internet using them to great effects, just like um, not mixing them at all using this brush, but using them similarly to, uh, I don't know, like um, acrylic markers and so on. That's uh, kind of not nice to say, I think. Um, I, I don't think I'm I'm a similar I have I, I certainly my hair are not similar to his hair <laughs> but I appreciate the joke yeah the yellow is really yeah let's try with the with the um, maybe uh, the orange one because it's kind of not so intensive and let's try to touch it to the blue and see what happens maybe it will explode uh, you can get like a transition effect a bit like paint a bit here and then like move it around with this mm. And then you get the, the color a bit dirty, so you can you have to clean it away on a piece of paper or something. I don't know. I don't think it's really nice for for like gradients on transitions, but you can do like this kind of layering of colors kind of easily, and it works okay. Um, I I'm guessing that if I start doing something with this color, for example, it would turn like turn like yeah, like a weird kind of dirty color. So maybe going from light to dark gradually using one color over the other would work okay here. So like putting washes on one on top of another. <laughs> no, no, no. It was it was well taken. <laughs> okay, let's try all the colors in the set and let's see what happens. Uh, well, nothing will happen. I'll just try all the colors, but um, yeah. So first, let me get the yellow, and let's pretend that it's here. I know that they are trying to uh, get us paint this, but I don't know how they get it so intensive like here. These are fresh from the package, so I guess it's just like this kind. This. Uh, even I cannot see it so much. Okay, so we have this orange kind of color, which I like actually. It's nice. It's markery. You can you can see that the color is marker like um, because it has this weird transparency that watercolor don't. And um, green. Like this one. Uh, I don't think it's possible to, to just go and meet him. I mean, w if you knew where the company was and you just knew the, like a password to the, uh, to the, to the lock, to the door and maybe went there and like, um, I don't know, stunned five people, then maybe, uh, but <laughs> I don't think so. For my most of my artwork, I use 300 grams paper, and we have this brown color, just nice. Also, 
It's a nice brown. And but it turns kind of pink when I when I dilute it. It really is similar to like for example the uh, fountain pen inks that I tried to use for painting uh, some scenes from Kobe. For, uh, I think two years ago. When I when you dilute them, uh, they change the color a bit. Okay, so we have the blue. This one is kind of violet-y when you um, dilute it. And what? Yeah, the red one. This also is a bit pinkish. Okay. So there you go. I, um, to be honest, I think I like the watercolors the best, of course. So I like these, the watercolors the best. So the part I tested first, uh, because they, even though they work like just usual watercolors, they have a bit of their own kind of character. So I will be uh, interested to use them in my art. Um, the second best, actually, I like these black markers, which is uh, a bit of a surprise for me because I thought these will be a bit more markery and not really uh, up my um, valley, let's say. Uh, but yeah, they, they work kind of nice and they mix well, actually. So yeah, these mixes are with the, the markers and they work well on the watercolor paper. So it's nice and i'm actually a uh the third best is is this one for now uh because they don't work so well on the watercolor paper it's it's the flow of the ink is not so good so you get this kind of dry brush effect i think you would have to use them on um hot pressed paper maybe or like really smooth copic like paper and um, when you dilute them, you get this color change, which looks really um, dye ink uh, based markers. -y. So the colors get kind of not only lighter, but also change a bit. So I don't know, maybe if you like these kind of dry brush effects, um, then maybe these are better for you. But uh, for, I think, more my style of painting, I'll be using the, the black ones more, I think. Uh, let's try one more, maybe like the green. And maybe the orangish kind of color. It's kind of hard to get enough of them on paper to actually make them work. Yeah, and it produces this kind of dirty green. Okay. Let's dry these and um, see how uh, they look when they are dry. Okay, so actually they look better when they are dry. So maybe you can do something with them also like watercolors on watercolor paper. Um, yeah, but we would need uh, a lot more colors for this. And um, yeah, so let's take a lot more colors. 
so um, this is I think the biggest set you can get for these for this uh, I will be trying to use the the new set so the historic art set so you have six colors each but also got like this uh, genuine genuinely a bit terrifying set for me because it has so many colors in it um, this one has 48 colors uh, and for starters let's see if it has a bit more yellow yellow uh, yeah at least we can see it on the camera it's actually quite intensive in real life okay and there's some I don't know how to show it to you but um, these are the first colors so we have like light green yellow orange violet skin tones and the next row is blues greens and some like olive green which is nice I like this kind of gold green colors for my painting and uh, we have uh, some violets and earth tones and a bit more like sky blue color which is great and let me show you the last row also. no uh. So these are some bonus colors I'm guessing like black gray um, kind of paints gray which is good skin tones and some like earth tones also let's take the black and the paints gray and see how it works okay so you have some black uh, it's, it's okay I could actually see me using this on a picture like um, uh, the Hokkaido and ink. It's a really soft tip, but it leaves this um, <coughs> dry brush effect. And paints gray is like this kind of grayish blue. And of course we can dilute them with the magic water pen thing because these are uh, these are not waterproof so um, yeah okay this looks well um, I'm kind of excited to uh, test them in a bigger piece and see what what I can do th with them because they have this ability to work a bit differently than the regular watercolors that I usually use so a set like this is exciting for me and let's see what we can do with them and yeah so that's the first one and the second one is this which is a bit weird because it has like these pastel colors I don't know why it's called art and graphic twin set uh, which has uh, how many colors is there one two three four five six seven eight nine ten twelve colors okay Oh, is it there a medical debate about what? About the Olympics or? Okay, so let's see a few colors from this one. Um, there's like a nice yellow. Which is less intensive than the one that is in the... Um, historical set which is this like really intensive yellow one uh, I think this set is actually nicely balanced even though it's it's like all these kind of pastel colors
I think uh, it, they would be nice to just make a picture with just these and... Oh, the violet is strong. The violet is strong with this one. The pink. Blobs of color are good. Whoa, the, this pink is strong also. Oh, this one is nice. I like this one. I wonder how many of them are like in the entire collection. I like the blue. These two are, are really nice. These two and the yellow and this pink. Nice. Uh, orange. Go to sleep. Uh, this will be probably on the channel when you wake up. So. Green. Violet. And one more. Brown, which doesn't look anything like the cap, but whatever. Okay, so I also got this set, which is good because it has few really nice colors. I really like this, this. The blue one, uh, this pink, this earth tone, this also. Maybe if I mix some of them, I can, we can also make something interesting. Okay, so that's this set. Uh, but wait, there's some more stuff. Um, I also got this one, uh, which is different than the first ones. Good afternoon. Uh, because these are actually uh, watercolors that are, from what I can see here, these are transparent watercolors. So these are more along your traditional watercolor sets that you can get just uh, like Schminke or whatever. And yeah, let's see how they look like. Uh, I'll be using this one for sure uh, to make like a small sketch. So you can look forward to this. And it's like in this container, you can take it out, I guess, no? Um, this looks like a floppy disk cover. Wait, is this a floppy disk cover? Yes, it's a floppy disk cover. <laughs> awesome. And let's quickly swatch them and see how they look. Yeah, it's kind of tiny quantity. White is white, so I'll not paint with it. Uh, the yellow is nice. It's kind of st it's strong. Let me zoom a bit. Uh, we have like a is more transparent brownish color i i really don't know name of names of colors i should learn I'm look I, I look kind of not well educated when i see oh this is a brownish color uh yellowish blue yellowish green <laughs> like an orangish color and this is a violet all of them look quite transparent actually which is nice and we have black violet red deep green this is like a bluish green and something uh, this is also yellowish blue i don't know why didn't they didn't put ultramarine to like balance these two but they look a lot similar this is like a why uh, okay uh, 
and um, let's try to use the white maybe on the marker here and let's see how um, how does it cover not very much okay so it's like this kind of weird addition here white okay so yeah this is nice i mean they, they are not as intensive as, as the um first set that i tested here like these but yeah this is well balanced and a bit I don't want to say boring, but a quite standard set of colors. They are not really saturated and I think it would be difficult to mix colors with them that would be kind of really, really saturated and vivid. So it's for this kind of sketch, I think, painting with more diluted paints and without like really difficult mixes. Uh, some watercolors are of this kind of mousse-like texture because they have agents in them that prevent them from uh, drying out. So they will have like honey in them or something that makes them easier to pick up with the brush and re-wet them and use them on your painting. But good watercolors will have nice balance of this so they get hard enough so you can like touch them and they're easy to transport but uh, soft enough that uh, they're easy to use also okay so uh the next thing we have here are these brushes i have too much stuff on my desk uh, these brushes and i have three types of them which uh differ the color with of the tip and we have a medium tip and detailer and large tip Uh, the point of including white is that you can add the white to other colors and make them look more um, pastel-like, so like, like these kind of baby colors, let's say. Uh, they kind of take away the light in a different way. The white, white takes away the intensity of the color in a different kind of way. Uh, than just uh, diluting it with water, it makes the colors a bit ch chalkier. Uh, how do you open these? No, I need scissors. Are you? Okay, and last one. なんかね、これ面白い。この黒いやつ。なんか今まで一番面白い。なんか書いてそこ。ここまで書けるから結構面白いんだよね。この細い白いやつ意外となんかインクの流れが細いからなんかこのドライブラッシュ的なものになるん
From what I know, these all are pigment based and waterproof when dried, even though it does not say. Let's just test it. Mm. Okay, so we have this one, which is this felt tip one. It says fine. I guess it's fine. And we have this tip which says medium which i guess is also fine on this paper it also gives this like dry ink effect and we have six of these standard ones which i will not test all of them because you know how pens like this work i guess whoa this is really thin let me choose one that's a bit more visible okay so this is 0.5 I think that the flow of the ink is nice. It doesn't have any sharp edges here a bit, so it does not hurt my fingers fingers like the Sakura ones. Well, it's good. The ink is not so black, but uh, as always with these type of types of pens. And let's just um, use some yellow on them and then see. Yeah, the Santa is called Kuretake. <laughs> They are bleeding a bit. I guess I should have left them for a bit longer. So let's get back to them in a second. Okay. Uh, uh, and we have also this, which I'm really kind of excited about because this is also uh, this kind of felt pen with similar ink, I'm guessing. It looks kind of fancy. Um, I'm not really a fan of these disposable brushes and pens because when they finish you just have to throw them away. So um, <coughs> it's this aspect uh, I don't really like. Hmm. It's kind of similar to the to this one, to the fine one. It's really light. It's plastic. Uh, it has a rubber grip, which feels okay. It has a similar, like double touch here. If you see, maybe if I zoom better. It, when I try to do thicker lines, sometimes it gets like this. Um, empty line inside so that's uh, a bummer but it's okay it works really similar to, to this one I think it's the same tip just in a different body let's just uh, compare it and... no this one is the thick one yeah I guess they are the same wait Focus. Yeah. Okay, so these are really similar and they feel really similar to draw too. So I guess the tip itself is similar, just the body is different. So uh, okay. No, I have not used Sailor Shikiori markers because I don't use markers so much actually. This is actually the first time I'm using something like this. Okay, so um, this is a thing that I don't really know what to do with it. With, um, it says Opal Colors and I don't even know what this is. It says Gansai Tambi, so I guess are, these are the pigment Japanese watercolors, but yeah, it's the same size as these ones. Uh, it will be really hard to show on the camera, I guess, but um, these are white and they have this shimmer on them. Uh, yeah, th these ones, I don't think they have cartridges, so 
that's bad and these ones also don't have cartridges and the black ones also don't have cartridges so all the markers i showed today are have no cartridges so if i was going to buy them by myself i would not do it um because of of this okay let's let's just try one and see what 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 happens zoom okay black paper i don't have black paper i guess Opal pink. They kind of are shimmery. <laughs> I guess it will be hard to see. But they are not white. I expected them to be white, but they are not white. Uh, they are transparent actually and have this glitter in them. So they make things that are not glittery. Um, are glittery this is the gold one and in, i guess it adds a bit of gold to like dark things it's actually better on the camera than uh, what i see because of the lighting but yes there are like uh, and there's like opal blue so all of them are like i think particle based yeah this is even harder to see it's like bluish particles okay that's uh interesting um maybe i can use it some in my art i will probably use the gold one um, so this one because it looked really nice uh, it's kind of brownish also so it's nice uh, it's actually uh better than the the schminke gold that i had like uh, uh, some time ago but yeah okay so this <sighs> and now mein damen und herren i think that's how do you call it e everyone now everyone i just wanted to be funny <clears throat> to the main part of the of the event here comes this big box and this is probably what i'm most excited about here in this set because these are all uh watercolors of the Japanese type, so the Gansai Tambi watercolors. And well, what can I say? This is awesome. <laughs> uh, so we have how many colors? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So six times eight color, 48. Uh, if I can multiply all right, but probably I won't use these three because they're like gold, silver and and kind of brownish gold color. This is nice because like all of them are named here in the box. So even if you take them down, it's easy to take them away. It's easy to put them in the right spot. They have also the number here so I can see. Okay, this is like this one. And um, so we have a lot of red. Uh, these are kind of Japanese traditional colors. Uh, so we have a lot of red. Uh, we have some really nice brown colors here, earth tones, like the reddish earth here. Um, we have again some like these really chalky colors that I, I'm guessing will be really uh, opaque. The, all of these will be probably really opaque, so we'll get to them uh, in a second. Uh, 
I used, yeah, I had, if you buy the big set of Schmincke watercolors, you will get uh, like silver and gold in them, which is, I don't know why. This is a, these are like speciality colors. I don't think they should be in like the main set. Uh, so, um, yeah. I uh, used Gansai Tambi once in my uh, videos. I had a set like this which had only like 12 colors, uh, like 11 colors plus white. And um, I liked them, but this set, it, with such a small set, it was hard to make colors that I wanted. So yeah, I'm excited to uh, try these out and let's just quickly swatch them out and see what happens. I have to take them like, um, let's just make a bit of a space here. I'll try to make them as they are on the uh, on the board in the same um, layout. Let me just swap water first. Okay, I have I had a lot of this weird glitter in my in my water tank so Okay, I'll be going from top left and let's see uh, I'll be telling you the names because I have a chart here uh. And uh, what's the orientation of this chart? I'm guessing like this So, okay, let's go from the top left. This is Rose Mother, and it looks really nice. I will just zoom in maybe so you can see better. Yeah, glitter in water tank. Second one is Carmine. Or car carmine, carmine, I'm guessing. Uh, next is rose mother. Okay, the, the first one was rose mother, not deep. This one is uh, this one was deep. This was this one is not deep. This was this this is more transparent actually. And next one is just red. Okay, so it's red. Next one is cadmium red. This one is nice. It's like the Japanese Daruma color. Next one is cadmium scarlet. It's kind of orangish. Next one is cadmium orange. A lot of cadmium in this city. and cadmium yellow okay the next row aureolin wow this is nice actually so far these are less opaque than i expected um, they look a lot like the Schminke watercolors that I use, which are also a bit uh, opaque, actually, for watercolors. I don't know about the mixes of pigments in these. Uh, it doesn't say on the packages if the, these are single pigment. I doubt it. Um, this one was le lemon yellow. This is greenish yellow. So yellow gold, probably something like this. Yes, I like this color a lot. It's really nice for a base for mixing your own greens. Next is olive green, and this is a bit opaque. Uh, this one is lime green, and this is really intensive. Next 
next one is sap green light this is your standard green next one is sap green this is a bit more realistic green i guess and the last one in this column is hookers green I would actually like to see um, because when you look at this chart it says hooker is green but in Japanese it says aoksa so like young leaf and this is sap green but it says kigusa and so on so I think it would be cool cooler to just learn all these colors in Japanese and then don't use like hookers green on a set of Japanese watercolors, which is not really nice. Okay. Uh, so next one is sap green deep. This is certainly a nice deep green color. And the next one is forest green. This is like a bluish green, nice. Some somewhere around the Viridian, I guess. And turquoise green deep. Oh, this is nice color. Yes. Uh, these kind of blue green colors I use a lot for my shadows, so it's nice to have them here. And the next one is Viridian, actually. Just this one. This is really transparent. And next. Sorry for my dog doing the noises. And next one is Malahite. It's one of the kind of baby powdery colors here. This one that's nice. And we are going for the blue series. Uh, Ultramarine Pale, they call this one. It's, I would say, similar to Mountain Blue, maybe like this kind of really really chalky blue uh, okay let me because they are written in hiragana so i can write them uh, read them rock show and black rock <laughs> it's hard to read them so maybe i'll just leave them here so you can screenshot them uh, later And we have next Ultra. Uh, no. Uh, so this one was Horizon Pale, and this one is Ultramarine Pale. So Pale Ultramarine. Okay. And late, last is Turquoise Brew, which is this one. Oh, this one is also nice. This is transparent, and uh, it would be nice for shadows and so on. Okay, so we are half in the set. Uh, next one is Cerulean Blue. This is also really nice. And uh, Cobalt Blue. Uh, next is ultramarine let's see how it works here as, as so far not much uh, granulation from it, any of these colors so ultramarine surprisingly Asa! Yamero! ultramarine is not so intensive it's a bit milky and uh, it does not have any granulation from what I can see so, okay. Yeah, the difference between watering down a paint and putting white in a paint is that it gives you a bit different nuance, especially uh, of how much the paper texture is there. So it, it actually is a different color. Uh, okay, so next we have Prussian Blue, which is really intensive. Okay. 
and in indigo this was also nice indigo and blue gray deep which is something like a paints gray but i i suppose yes and uh, next one is imperial violet okay let's see if it's imperial it's quite regal i guess and the last one in this is cobalt violet Oh, this is nice. I will show the dog on uh, at the end of, of, of this stream, so. <laughs> um, okay, and um, next one is purple. Purple. This one is a interesting color. It's kind of transparent, but at the same time, so milky stuff going on. Yeah, it's this one is really nice. Uh, lilac, which is again uh, 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 with white in it. Asa, <laughs> tamuna. And pink. Uh, cherry blossom pink this one is it is certainly whitish pink yes also this paper is not really good for granulation so maybe if I I've, if I use something more textured you would get more next one is r rose beige which is yeah okay um, these two colors are really similar to some uh, watercolors from Schminke, I guess, uh, because you get the Naples yellow and Naples pink, which are similar to this, these two. And yellow ochre, which is this one. And burnt sienna, which is a bit less intensive than I expected, but it's really nice also, really nice color. And maroon, maroon, this is weird, okay. This is not a color that I expected in a, in a set, it's, it's something between red and violet and brown it's actually quite unique i haven't seen color like this in a set uh, some of them are semi-opaque some of them are transparent and some of them are really uh opaque uh, i would say that so far mostly transparent but yes half and half probably Okay, and the last row is Indian red, which is probably something like my favorite color, Caput Mortum. And it is. Raw, raw Umber Deep. Which requires a bit of force to take it out. It's like this. And black. Which is kind of nice and neutral, actually. Uh, gray. And it says actually gray. Okay, okay. White. Again. Uh, well, it's white. Let's try to paint it over a color and see how well it covers. Eh, okay. -ish. 
let's see how it looks when it dries. And here we have like three original ones, which is silver. It says white gold, but uh, okay. It's silvery glitter, glitter. And uh, bluish gold, which is like this old gold color which actually has some color, not only glitter in it. I'll have glitter in my water tank again. Yeah. And uh, gold, which is red, red, red gold kind of thing. Okay, and that's basically the whole set. So actually the color that comes in the Klimt set is a different type of gold than the ones that you can get in the standard one because it's like this um, really vibrant gold which I like actually like um, like yellow ochre kind of gold which I like Okay, let me zoom out a bit and see the whole thing. So we have 48 colors. Like this. Uh, from these, I would say these are mostly transparent. This is probably opaque. These are opaque. These three are opaque. Uh, these are kind of half opaque. These are opaque. Um, and maybe this is opaque. So actually I would say that 60% probably is fairly transparent. The rest is opaque or half opaque. So um, it's actually less opaque than I expected. Um, these handle mostly so far from what I see as just your regular watercolors. They don't do so much, um, uh, how do they call it, granulating effect. Um, if I was to compare it, for example, with my uh, Schminke set, um, which is a bit more used, um, we could go for something like the Potter's Pink, for example. It's not an intensive color, but it's a really granulating color. And Ultramarine maybe, and see how these compare in terms of granulation on this paper. Okay, so let's dry these and see them once again slowly under the camera. Okay, so um, the white is not so opaque. Again, it's probably something to add to your color so you can uh, make them more kind of powdery. Uh, most of these colors are kind of flat when they dry, um, really intensive actually, well saturated and look more um, transparent than I expected. So they should be kind of easy to use in your everyday watercolor painting. 
the most colors that are kind of hope of granulating is this is actually dry but it looks wet uh, is this one and this one which is uh, the purple and ultramarine this one is actually a bit weird because even though it's dry uh, it kind of looks uh, like it's wet it's kind of shiny uh, but other than that they look like uh, any other watercolors of good um, uh, quality so you have these colors here which are the powdery type and some additional like interesting colors like silver and gold and uh, old gold and so on and white and for example compared to Schminke this is Schminke ultramarine fine and um, Potter's pink and you can see that Potter's pink has really really granulating color so even on this paper it has a lot of granulation and compared to this for example this ultramarine is a lot more vivid color and has a lot more granulation actually than Schminke but all the other colors are mostly flat you don't see the texture of the paper so much okay I will be painting with this set and testing it on my channel, at least in, in a video or two. Uh, probably during this month I would like to focus on the uh, uh, old art inspired set. So the set of six watercolors and six, six watercolors and six uh, markers. Uh, I will and I will also do something with this small set. But um, yeah, later on I will certainly try to paint something with this, which actually looks really awesome, uh, just as a studio, pretty huge uh, watercolor set of many colors. I will probably just abandon these here because I don't need white or, or, or gold and so on. Um, so maybe I will have to figure out a nice wooden box for these because this is just like a, a cardboard box so um, it would be nice to make a box like I did for my uh, Blackwing pencils to uh, put them in so something like let me just take it here I made like this box for my uh, black wings so it's like a wooden box so I maybe should make something that's um, not so high but a bit lower to put all these colors in I think they would fit actually perfectly in this size so yeah making a box like this should not be a problem to to actually fit them in yeah I like the box but yeah um, to use in a studio, I would probably use uh, make something uh, like a palette for it. Okay, so uh, here you go. This is the whole thing that I got from Kuretake. So I can use some of their tools in the upcoming or only um, uh, just right now the, the, the Worldwide Watercolor Month. And uh, even though they have like um, prompts for the uh, all the month so you get uh, like keywords like you get in uh, inktober or something and um yeah i will not do all of them but i'll just choose like three or four that uh, kind of tickle my fancy and uh, i'll try out the some of the sets that uh, kuretake sent me but uh, i will use this one for my work in the future that will be featured on the channel uh, I will be still using my Schminke and my Mijello watercolors as my main watercolor sets because I like them really really uh, much but um, sometimes using uh, new tools and new paints can be good for your creativity even if it's like a limited set of six colors or something so um, yeah there you go I, ho I hope you liked this stream I usually don't do uh, just reviews or just like unboxings and stuff. 
uh, but um, Kuretake was nice enough to send me these uh, without actually requiring me to paint anything in specific. They just wanted me to participate in the World Watercolor Month and because I like watercolors and I like months and I like the world, I was like, okay, I will um, do something and uh, use your paints for it. So, yeah. I wanted to use the Gansai Tambi watercolors for some time. I had like a 12 color set, like this small one. Uh, not this one, because this is like transparent watercolors, but uh, one, this, I think this part is red. And I kind of liked it, so uh, I'm excited to test the big one and see how they mix and do stuff together. But uh, today we are already like almost two hours in, so uh, we will leave it at that. Uh, okay, thank you for joining me today. I hope you had a nice and relaxing time testing some um, uh, testing some watercolors and, and pens and markers and stuff. And I'll see in a, in a new uh, s uh, stream. And also, last, I will have I have to show you the dog. Wait. Sorry for my face. No camera, stay. I'm upside down. Here is the dog. Ah. And it's water. No, it's a good, it's dog. A <laughs> nice young to the camera. But uh, she's only like uh, three and a half months old, so... Here is our new member of the studio. Ah, no, you're too cute. Okay, thank you for joining me today and have a nice day, uh, all of you. Thank you.